Hey guys, uh, welcome to the tutorial and uh, today we're going to see about Azure Load Balancer and the topic for today is we will see overview of Azure Load Balancer and need for Load Balancer and then quickly we will do a hands-on lab and by the end of this tutorial you will have knowledge on provisioning a public load balancer and you will have an idea what is frontend IP and you will know how to uh, configure backend pool and also you will know uh, how to configure health probe on the load balancer and finally we will wrap up the tutorial by you know doing the load balancing rule and then test the application so i'm so excited let's just quickly jump on to the slide and uh, let's see the overview of load balancer so before we uh, provision azure load balancer let's understand uh, what is the need for load balancer and if you are already familiar with uh, what is load balancer and its purpose, you can just forward this video or skip uh, the content. Uh, for the people who have no idea about what's load balancer, I'm going to explain a little bit on here and then quickly go on to the hands-on lab. So imagine you have a web app running on multiple instances, and then uh, you are giving the URL to the customer. And uh, all your users are going to you know, hit the web app which is running inside your virtual machine or any containerized place. And um, after some time, you realize that all the users requests are going through the same instance. And it's obviously going to overload the instance and then probably it's going to crash. And then what's the purpose of having your uh, web app running on the other containers or other virtual machines? And this is the scenario. If this is a scenario, how do you actually distribute uh, the Azure request uniformly that you're not going to harness one instance and that's when you have something called azure load balancer in azure so what you're going to do is you're going to deploy a azure load balancer inside the virtual network and have that distribute the request instead of going through one instance it's probably going what it's going to do is all the request goes to the front end ip of the load balancer and through that it's going to go and redistribute the request uh, to other instance so for example this is from something like that so all the requests will probably going to go through azure load balancer and then the request goes to multiple instance right so and this is the need for azure load balancer and uh, there are actually two types of load balancer and one is the friend a uh, public load balancer which is exposed to the internet and that is the reason it's called public load balancer and the public load balancer are used to load balance traffic mainly from internet to your virtual machines and these connections are accomplished by translating their private ip address to public ip address and if this is overwhelming don't worry we're going to see a hands-on lab and you'll have an idea what is front and ip and all those things and there is also something called internet internal load balancer by the term you probably have guessed it that you know these load balancers for example, you have your Azure um, backend database, right? Obviously, you're going to have a web app running and all its data is going to be persisted on the MySQL server. And then you want to also have the traffic being distributed. You don't want to hit the same instance, right? Let's say you have a multi multiple um, Azure SQL instance, MySQL instance. So in that case, you're going to have another load balancer too, just to transfer the request to multiple instance instead of just hitting the one uh, same MySQL. And in this case, you definitely don't want to expose this load balancer to the public because you don't want to have, have access to the database. And that is the reason that it's called as internal load balancer. It's also going to be inside the same virtual network, but just for the schematic diagram, I have placed it outside. But usually all these things, this both um, instance and resources, it's probably going to be part of the virtual network and that's it and uh, let's go uh, and see a couple other things so quickly uh, azure load balancer does not store customer data so that's one thing and there's also two types of load balancer one is the standard load balancer and is the basic load balancer and basic load balancer by default is open to internet so you have to be careful when you create a load balancer and then the standard load balancer is uh, created in no secu uh, security model so it's very secure and you can trust that and another quick thing that i want to uh, say before going on to the lab is with azure load balancer all the traffics are being you know transferred to multiple instance 
using the hashing algorithm and that's how all the inborn are being you know distributed into the virtual machines so without wasting time let's go on to azure portal and uh, let's quickly uh, do some uh, hands-on so we are inside the azure portal and i have already went ahead and uh, spun up two virtual machines with windows os and uh, I have named it as production instance one and production instance two. And for the sake of scenario, I have uh, deployed ISS, which comes along with the Windows box. And I have an index.html file inside on the both virtual machines. And if you're not aware how to spin up a virtual machine for a Windows OS, I have a video for that. Please check the description or you can click on the top right corner for the add card. And as you can see that, you know, we have a public IP address associated with the two virtual machines. Let's just quickly test if my uh, ISS is working or not. Let's just quickly copy this and then uh, paste it here. Yes, so it's going to go and hit the ISS and it's saying um, production instance one. Let's test the other instance two and then uh, we'll move on. And if you can see, I believe I copied the same um, IP address. I'm sorry. So let's just move on to the other public IP and copy that. Give me something, guys. Sorry. And okay, I don't know what's going on. Fancy and paste it and hit enter. And now you can see that you know it's going and uh, hitting the ISS and it's saying production instance two. Okay, so what we're gonna do uh, first thing first is we don't want this public IP address associated to the virtual instance, right? Because we want the front end IP address of the load balancer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to production instance one and uh, click on the networking and go on to the network interface and IP configuration and you're gonna go and click on the IP config one and we're gonna go and disable the public IP address by clicking the disassociate and save and I'm going to do the same process for the Windows uh, production instance too and then I will resume the video back okay so I have disabled the IP address now we can see that you know I don't have any um, IP address associated with the virtual machine let's just um, reconfirm it by refreshing it yes I don't have so next thing uh, we want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, create a load balancer so on the global search bar click on uh, the load balancer or just type load balancer it will pop up so we go and create a load balancing so let's just create load balancer and before that we just have to go and uh, see the location of uh, our virtual machines so that you know we are uh, not messing up anything so my virtual group uh, is on West US, so I'm gonna go and uh, create a load balancer on West US too. So let's just call this as LWB, and uh, West US is there. And we wanna go and uh, create a public load balancer. And as I said, we're gonna go and use the standard one because this is more secure than the basics. And let's create, select the resource group, and uh, Go on down and as i said we want to have a public ip address because that is the ip address that's been used by the client site so we're going to create a new one let's call this lwp hyphen pub and that will create a public ip address and uh, let's just do a review and create okay guys so um the load balancer is being deployed let's go on to the resource and let's click on the front end IP configuration. Just verify we have our public IP address for the load balancer. And as you can see that we have a public IP address and without wasting time, let's go on to the backend pool. So backend pool is nothing but your virtual instance, virtual machines that has been um, you know, hosting our web app. So we, have, we want to have them added to the load balancer backend pool. So click on the add button and that will take you to this wizard and then you gotta drop down your virtual network and uh, i'm going to go and see you have virtual machines and if you click on add and that should pop up our two virtual instance virtual machines 
right? In case if you don't see them popping up here, there's two one reason is that you if you have a public IP address already assigned to the virtual machines, you will not get this drop down. So make sure that you don't you remove that public IP address so that you know it gets listed here. So click on this two instance that we have and then click on add. And right now we don't have virtual machine scale set. So I'm going to skip on that and just click add. And uh, what it says is we need to have a backend pool name. So let's say production instances and then click add. And once that's validated, it will be added. I will pass on the video and then resume. Okay, the deployment is succeeded. And let's just close and then refresh this virtual machine. And as you can see that uh, we have our front end IP address of the load balancer automatically assigned to this two instance. So that's the reason uh, we went ahead and disabled the public IP address that got tied to the virtual machine. So let's quickly go back to the load balancer and uh, just configure um, health probe and other stuff. So, so we have our front end IP address and we have a backend pool that's been added. Next thing is we want to go and do a health probe. And let's just open that, click on add, and then you can just say health check, give it a name, and then we have our TCP, um, and then port 80, and then uh, we want to have an internal of five, and then just when it is unhealthy threshold is two consecutive failures, and uh, used by is not stop load balancing rules. So uh, we have create, um, created a front end IP address and we have already added the back end pools of these two virtual machines. And the next thing that we want to do is to create a health probe. And the purpose of health probe is that, you know, we're gonna, we want to make sure that, you know, the, the traffic is not being routed on a dead virtual machine or some dead instance. So we want the load balancer to keep checking on the health um, on the virtual machines. So let's just quickly give it a name for this. Let's say like health checker and uh, the protocol is TCP and the port is 80 because uh, we want, we are running a ISS web server on port 80 and uh, I'll leave all the settings uh, as it is and then I'll click quickly add it. And after adding the health probe, uh, we'll go and add the load balancing rules. I'll stop the video and then resume it back once it has been deployed. Okay, so the health checker is being uh, deployed successfully. Let's just close this and then uh, go on to add the important part of this uh, tutorial is to add the load balancing rule. So what is the load balancing rule is basically we are telling the load balancer that uh, that if any request is coming through the front end IP address and we want to listen to port 80 to redirect that to backend pool that we have already add. So let's just go and create a load balancing rule. So the, let's start with by adding the load balancing rule name is uh, just type whatever the name that you want to type. Just say like rule one and then the front end IP address that we just created for the load balancer. And the front end port should be 80 and the back end port is also 80 because the ISS is going to listen on to that. And then um, we created a back end pool. So just drop down, we can see that there is something called production instance. It has our thing. And as you can see that we already had a health probe. So we can just click on that too. And this is related to session persistence. So if you want all the requests from a single user to be hitting on the same virtual machine, then we need to enable that. If we don't want to you know, enable that, let's just leave it um, as it is, like none, so that it won't be any session persistent. That meaning every request from the user is always going to be hitting a different instance and it's not going to be in the same instance. So I will leave all the other settings as it is and then I'll click on the add. So once that is add, let's just go and test our um, load balancing. So as you can see that, you know, our deployment is succeed. So the load balancing rules are in place. It's time for us to go and test the rules load balancer. So let's go and grab the public IP address of the load balancer. Just click on the IP address, public IP, and then let's just 
that's it let's go and hit enter and as you can see that the first request is actually going to the production instance one so i'm gonna open uh the in incognite window and just to see if it's redirecting the request to the second instance okay again it's redirecting to the instance one so let's do a multiple request and let's see if it's changing or not let's give it a time and then we'll do it again okay guys so i what i did is just i went ahead and refreshed my uh browser and then cleared my cache and as you can see that now it's it's redirecting to production instance too let me open the another tab and then just hit one more time and see that it's going through instance two so that means that our load balancer is working that and uh, consequently it's going to you know redistribute the request from production instance one to production instance two and that's it and so let's just see uh, what we have done so far quickly and uh, let's have a quick recap. So what we did is uh, we went ahead and crea uh, created two Windows virtual machines and we installed ISS and had a index.html page. And then after that, uh, we went ahead and disabled the public IP address on the virtual machines. And then we created the load balancer and we, after creating the load balancer, we went ahead and uh, started um, provisioning the front-end IP address that's been used for the virtual machine and then we went ahead and created the help probe and the third thing we did is we added these two virtual machine um, onto the backend pool of the load balancer and finally we went ahead and also created the load balancing rule what does it is uh, any request on the front-end IP is coming through it's basically going to go and redirect the request to instance 1 or instance 2 and we tested it and it's working fine so i hope you like this tutorial and uh, thank you for uh, letting me you know give you guys this tutorial and uh, if you like this tutorial please give me a big thumbs up if you don't like the tutorial please give me a dislike and i'm cool with that and if you think there's anything that i can improve on this tutorial please let me know in the comment section and happy learning guys thank you